Now this first story it is called The Three Little Men and if you listen well you'll find out why. Because a long time ago there was a village and in that village there lived a man whose wife had died. Aww. Aww. But it was okay because he lived with his daughter whose name was Kate. And on the other side of that village there was a woman whose husband had died. Aww. But it was okay because she lived with her daughter Joanna. And Joanna and Kate were the best of friends. They played every single day. But one day, Joanna's mother called to Kate and said, I'd really like to marry your father. Can you go and put in a good word for me? And if you do, I promise you that when we all get to live in one house, I will give you milk to bathe in every morning and wine to drink. Not bad, eh? <laughs> Well, Kate didn't think it was bad either. And so she ran all the way home and told her father all about it. But her father wasn't too impressed. He didn't want to get married again. And so for that reason, he thought, hmm, I'm going to have to get out of this somehow. But he saw how excited his daughter was. Because you know when you've got a really good friend, you kind of sort of think, oh, wouldn't it be good if we were family? So your best friend at school, you might think, oh, it'd be really nice if she was my sister. Or your brother. Well, that's how Kate and Joanna felt. They really wanted to be sisters. And so Kate was there with her father. Oh, please, 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 please. And he didn't want to disappoint his girl. But neither did he want to get married again. So he came up with a plan. He said to her, find my boot. You know the one that's got the hole in the sole? Well, if you take that and you take it up to the roof and you hammer it in to the rafters right up in the roof, you know, right up there. Can you see right up there? Yeah. Brilliant. If you can go in the other way, then you'll... If you fill that with water, if the water stays in the boot, I will marry again. But if the water drains out of that hole in the boot, I won't get married. Well, what do you think is going to happen with a hole in the shoe? The water's going to dribble down. You think the water's going to dribble down? You think that as well? How about you? Yeah? Do we all think the water's going to dribble out? No. <laughs> Most people do. And that's exactly what Kate father was hoping for. He was hoping that water would dribble out, you wouldn't have to get married. But can you imagine his surprise when all of a sudden Kate came running downstairs. Dad! 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 You'll never believe it! The water stayed in the boot! Not one drop has disappeared out of it! Oh dear. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> That's it. Come on in. Find yourself somewhere to sit. I'm afraid you might have to have a cushion now. <laughs> so, Kate's father gulped. Oh dear. And then he started setting about the marriage arrangement. And there was a huge celebration and everybody was happy. Is everybody happy? Yes! yes! And they ate till their bellies were full and they drunk till their heads were giddy and they danced till their feet were sore. When all of that was done, everybody went home off to sleep. And in the morning when Kate woke up, there at the end of the bed she found a bowl of milk for her to bathe in. She found wine for her to drink. And when she looked across the other side of the room to where her new stepsister was sleeping, she saw that Joanna only had water to bathe in and water to drink. But on the second morning, when the girls got up, they both only had water to drink and water to bathe in. And on the third morning, it was Kate who only had water, and it was Joanna that had the milk and the wine. You see, this was the start of things to come. Joanna's mother looked at Kate with new eyes. She saw that Kate was beautiful and lovely and loving. And then she looked at her own daughter and thought, ooh, she's rather ugly and a bit repellent. Nobody's going to want her. Oh, I've got to hide Kate away, because otherwise my own daughter will never get a husband. But it didn't matter what job that horrid old stepmother gave to Kate. Cleaning the ashes, 
cleaning out the animals, covered in dust and muck and stinking to high heaven. Kate did it all with a good heart. And because of that, she was still always beautiful. And Joanna, well, she stopped around the house a bit. And so she was still always ugly. And as summer faded into autumn and the first snows began to fall, well, the stepmother, she got more and more angry with Kate. Oh, I've got to find a way to hide that girl away. In fact, I can't just hide her anymore. I'm going to have to get rid of her. Boo! So, she thought and she thought till she thought a hole in the ground and she plotted. And when the snow was thick on the ground, she called Kate to her and she said, Here, take this. She presented her with a paper dress. And she said, You must wear this. You must go out into the snow and you must go and find me strawberries because that's what I want to serve for Christmas dinner. Would you think snow, strawberries grow in the snow? No. no. When do they grow? Summer. In the oh, summer. Yeah. So you're not going to find any when it's wintry outside. You're not going to find any at Christmas, are you? Mm. Not unless you go to Tesco's. <laughs> wow. Kate knew that there wasn't a Tesco for miles around and she thought, oh, this is terrible. I'm not going to find anything. But her stepmother was so cruel and bit and knitted all the time that in the end, Kate took that paper dress, she put it on, she shuddered and she shook, and she went out with an empty basket to start searching the forest for strawberries. And unsurprisingly, she didn't find any. But what she did find was right in the centre of that forest, there was a house. And peering out of the window of that house, were three little heads with a great shock of red hair, big bushy red beard, a bit like that. <laughs> <laughs> and they had enormous noses pressed right up against the glass. And the three little heads waved at Kate. And Kate, frozen and shaking, lifted up a goose pimply arm and waved back. And the three little men beckoned her in and she went to the door they opened it and they let her come in by the fire which was roasty and warm Ooh. nothing like warming your bottom up when you've been out cold is there <laughs> and kate she sat she thawed out and she started to tell them why she was in the forest in a paper dress and a basket looking for strawberries and they listened and they <coughs> thought what an extraordinary story what a horrible stepmother <coughs> you've got there and when kate finished Talking, she felt a bit hungry. So she reached in her pocket and she found a small crust of bread, the only thing that she'd been able to grab from the house before she left. And she took a bite. But those three little men, they looked at her with hungry eyes. And she said, Oh, Dean, would you like a bit? And she broke it into four pieces. She kept the smallest bit for herself and she shared it out with the three little men. And they all ate. And once they'd finished eating, they looked at Kate and they said, you're a good girl, you're a kind girl, but would you do one more thing for us? The back step, it's so covered in snow and we're so small that we can't get out there. Would you go and sweep it for us? And Kate, being a good girl, what did she say? Yes. yes. She shook the broom, she went out and she started to sweep. And as soon as she was out of the room, those three little men, they nodded, they winked at each other. And they said, what a good girl, what a kind girl, we've got to do something for her. Horrible situation she's in, should we do something nice for her? Shall we? Yes. yes! Well, the first little man turned around and he said, I am going to give her the gift of beauty. Every morning she wakes up, she's going to become even more beautiful than the day before. Oh, said the second one, oh, that's a good gift, brother. Very well done. But I am going to give her the gift of wealth. Every time she speaks, her words will transform into gold and fall from her lips. I wish I had that skill. I would be rich. <laughs> <laughs> and the 
third brother went, oh, oh, good gift, brother. Well done, but I am going to give her the best gift of all. I am going to give her the gift of love. Because oh. very soon, a handsome, generous, kind-hearted and noble king will come past and see her and ask her to go and be his queen. Oh, said the other two. Oh, yes, that is a very good gift. <laughs> and it was just then that Kate came back in with a look of astonishment on her face and holding not an empty basket, but now a full basket, full of rich, red, ripe strawberries. <laughs> I know. Stop it. <laughs>
and the second brother said, oh, that's a good one, that's a good one. But I am going to make it so that instead of gold falling from her lips, toads will leap. <laughs> And the third one said, for such a miserable girl, there can only ever be a miserable end. And with that, the three little men disappeared and so did the house. And Joanna arrived home and she said to her mother, they wouldn't give me anything. But what happened when she spoke? Oh, sorry. The toads <coughs> leapt from her lips and her mother looked and went, Aah! And it was then that the mother grew angry, full of fury. She started boiling water in the cauldron. She put yarn in it, and as soon as Kate came into the kitchen, that horrible old crone grabbed out the yarn and flung it, boiling hot, across her shoulders. And Kate screamed, and her stepmother laughed. <laughs> if you want to go and wash my yarn and cool your shoulders, take this axe, go to the lake and cut a hole in the ice. And so Kate ran out the house with that axe and she chopped a hole in the ice and she took the yarn off and she, ah, oh, bathed her scalding shoulders. And when she looked up, she saw coming down the road a gilded golden carriage. And it stopped right in front of her. And the window in the carriage came down and a head peered out. The most handsome head she had ever seen and upon it sat a crown. And the king looked at Kate and Kate looked at the king and in that moment their eyes locked so tight that their hearts started beating to one rhythm. And the king looked at Kate and said, please, come with me, be my queen. And Kate said, yes. Yes. <laughs> Try that one again. Kate said, yes. yes. Of course she did. <coughs> and she was taken away to a far off kingdom and a beautiful palace and they had the most wondrous wedding. And people danced till their feet were sore, they ate till their bellies were tight, and they drank till their heads were spinning. And it took nearly a year for the celebrations to die down. And at the end of that year, celebrations started again because Kate gave birth to a beautiful baby daughter. Aww. And what was her name? Her name? Well, what would you like her name to be? Um, <laughs> Terry. Oh, <laughs> all right, Terry, Princess Terry. We like that. <laughs> and so the baby was born, and news spread throughout the kingdom. News went further beyond the kingdom. The news travelled so far that it reached a small little hut on the edge of a forest where an old crow lived with her daughter who spat toad. They heard about a beautiful queen who got more beautiful every day, who when she spoke, gold fell from her lips. And they knew exactly who that woman was. And so they decided to go and pay Kate a visit. They arrived at the castle and they were taken to her bedchamber where she was resting for a few days after having the baby. And when the old crone and Joanna were taken into the bedchamber, Everybody else left, and as soon as they did so, Joanna grabbed Kate's shoulders, <laughs> and the old crone grabbed her feet, and they pulled her from the bed, and they flung her out of the window, and down, down, down she wow. fell until, splosh, she landed in the river. And when they checked to make sure that she didn't come back up again, Joanna quickly leapt in the bed and pulled the covers over her head. And not a few moments later, there was a at the door. And the king arrived asking to see his wife. But the old crone stood there and went, Oh, I'm sorry. No, you can't. She's got a terrible fever. You'll have to come back again in the morning. So the king left. And in the morning, he came back. And they invited him in. But the 
bedchamber was much changed. The thick curtains blocked out all the light. There was a small flickering candle in the corner of the room, and there on her bed lay the queen, or so the king thought, with the bed covers up over her head. And when the king sat on the edge of the bed to talk to his wife, when she answered, her voice was transformed, husky and rough, and instead of gold falling from her lips, there came oh, And the king was a bit confused about all this. And he looked at the old crone and she said, oh, don't worry, it's the fever. Don't you mind that. She'll be right in a day or two. And so the king left again. But at midnight, that night, in the nursery, the maid was looking after the beautiful Princess Terry. <laughs> <laughs> and the maid saw the most astonishing sight. She looked out the window, and all of a sudden there came a pure white duck swimming up the guttering. You don't see that every day, do you? Yeah. What, they gutter in your nose, Ah, gutter a very old thing. <laughs> and when the duck got to beside the window, it let out the guttering in through the window and into the room. Quack! Quack! Tell me of the king. Is he sleeping? But as you can imagine, the maid was a bit stunned and so she didn't really answer. It's not every day you see a talking duck. <laughs> <laughs> but the duck carried on. Quack! Quack! Tell me about the royal guests. And at this point, the maid found her tongue and she said, they're sleeping and so is the king. And the duck quacked a third time. Quack, quack, and tell me of the baby. What is with her? She is sleeping too, said the maid. And suddenly that duck transformed into a transparent figure of a woman. And she floated across the room, and with translucent hands, she plucked the covers and tucked the baby in, and leant down and gave the softest of kisses on the baby's forehead. And when that figure turned around, the maid could see it was the face of Queen Kate. And slowly, back towards the window, wafted that spirit. She turned herself back into a duck, and with one last final quack, she leapt out of the window onto the guttering and swam off down it. And the same thing happened the next night, and on the third night, but as that figure was heading back to the window, she turned, she looked at the maid, and she said, call the king, tell him to bring his sword and swing it around my head three times. So the king was called and the king came and he drew his sword and one, two, three. And on the final sweep of the sword, suddenly Kate became whole again, solid and pinchable. And she flung her arms around the king and the king held her tight and close and she spilled forth all that had happened. And they decided that it wasn't safe for her to be revealed just yet. And so she was hidden until the day of the christening, a few days later. And everybody who was anybody was invited to the cathedral that day. All of you were invited and all of you came and you sat in those rows looking up at the altar as the old crone with the baby came hobbling up the aisle and behind her came Joanna keeping a hand over her mouth so no toads. <laughs> and the old crone got to the king and looked up and said, your child. And the king took the baby and looked at the old crone and in a voice loud enough that everyone in the cathedral could hear, the king said, I have but one question for you. What would you do with one who threw another from their bed into the river? And the old crone, suddenly realising she had been found out, but not wanting to admit her guilt, stammered and stuttered and said, Oh, I would do something horrid. I would squeeze them into a barrel, nail it shut and throw them into the same river. And the king smiled. 
and from behind the throne walked Kate. And the king looked at that throne and he said, by your own words, you have sealed your fate. Guards! And the guards came and they grabbed the old crone and they grabbed Joanna and they took them out of the cathedral and they crowned them into a barrel and they nailed it shut and they threw them into the river. Kate and her daughter and the king, well, they went on to live a good and happy life. But just like that little man said, Joanna and the crow, they met a miserable end. Now you may think that mean or you may think that fair, but whatever you think, remember, don't end up like that pair.